Okay, well, you're welcome now to another episode of our Centenary Podcast. Tonight, it's, it's the ladies' turn. We've, we're delighted to have three girls who blazed the trail uh, for, for the ladies in Ardra, uh with the first, our first All-Ireland medals in 2003 the, in the junior final that year. Shirley McHugh, uh, Mairead, and Marie Gallagher, and Aoife McDonald. So thanks very much for coming on, girls. You're very welcome. Thank you, John. How are you? Thanks, thanks John. John. So we're probably going to we're going to start really looking back at back at the start the, with things in the club and that kind of stuff. Uh, you obviously you had long careers with the club. The two girls obviously once joined us when 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 their own home clubs hadn't hadn't got teams. So uh, and Shireen obviously Shireen you were there from the start. What's your earliest memory, Shireen? That we, the club was formed back in 1992. What's your earliest memories that time? You'd have been around on this around that team. Can you remember much about yeah. that? Nothing started off. I remember I was um, I was about 15 years of age and went up to the community centre in Ardra for training and we met up with all the girls and eventually the weather was so bad at the time we couldn't even get outside but eventually we did and we started training in Sandfield right. and uh, a few bunny holes and stuff we dodged but uh, we had a great, great fun, great experience, got to know all the girls, met loads of new friends. Um, James McBerty was there with us. Um, great, he was brilliant with all the girls. He used to have a wee bus at the time, and he would take us to. I think he took us to our first game, maybe. And uh, we just had lovely memories back then. Everything was just, you know, easy flowing, and even a way to rouse with the men about different stuff. But we still battered on, as I say. Um, we enjoyed it. Um, we played, uh, we didn't win anything our first year. I think we, um, I got called in for the county the following year and um, Granny Dever was with me and we won on our the, first. The under 16 Ulster, I think that year, in 83. Uh, we won our under 16 Ulster that year. And um, from then on, then the club kind of started improving and we got, oh, we got better. Because you know yourself, when you start playing Gaelic football for the first time, it's not an easy task, but we, we got there eventually and we played and um, eventually the other girls joined us, Mairead and Aoife and a few girls. Well, Mairead was later coming, no, right? I, no, no, I was in 92 because I remember Sandfield, me, we thumbed down. I remember the community centre, I started in 92 and then I went back up to Kelly Beggs in 94. Sure. Better money up there. <laughs> How did how did the how did you happen to come down here for us? Who was supposed to be Was the man? I will James I because he was a fellow Kelly Bates man. But <laughs> no, no, it was actually I was friendly with um, Caroline and Mike, Mark and McHugh, and they were on about it. So I would have started the centre, and then I would have known James and uh, Jimmy Boyle, Jimmy Bruce, I uh, like uh, Fancy Bennett would have been there in the, the start of it. Like, but yeah. it was it was great crack. She's beat some tight matches against Glenn. Like, jeez, <laughs> you were just. It was. It was tough going. Like, it was. Geez, tough. I remember. But even the crowds, surely remember that. Well, yeah. Like I remember the crowds that we would have gone to Glenn. It was kind of there was no league set up as such. Yeah. And then I know McCools were very strong because they remember they had the soccer teams. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. remember the indoor ones and that. And then we went into Glenn. Jeez, the crowds were packed. It was really, really, and that was the first time we got a real buzz out of it. Yeah, you know, yeah. it was a big novelty at the time. It was only after yeah. start county, and it was yeah. a bit buzz of it. I can remember myself. You, you, yourself, and Carney were kind of blazing the trail that time. Shirley with the county team, or with Maria with the county team. Yeah. Um, obviously, we'll be chatting to Carney on another episode, but just you just got you just got onto the All Ireland final, and we got onto the All Ireland ninety three, and I, I played with yeah, um, yeah, I, oh, I, I think the nerves got us too, and the experience of London being there two All Irelands before it. We just, but you know what? It was great. It was our first year, and we we did get treated better with the we had lovely <laughs> McGee suits and everything. They were lovely, <laughs> lovely tartan skirts. I still have it. But <laughs> <God. hit> me <laughs> <now>. <laughs> Thank God they left in '94. <laughs> oh, we still had them in '94. I think. Oh, geez, they were the tightest look at things ever. But anyway, look at. Oh, the fat on and that was grand. But then look at the continuation. Then surely you came in like before then. Yeah. But like it was mad. We like we had no cars. We used to thumb everywhere. We used to remember Shaggy Affigan. 
Yeah, I used to then in the beginning I would cycle from our dra to Kelly Beggs to meet you to get them with Carly Mark and Kelly Beggs at the time. Yeah, that's right. And now she she was driving. She really blew Fiesta at eight. Oh uh, no, surely before that. Remember, remember Shan. We used to get a lovely oh, demand, Shan. Uh, but, uh, did he started them after that. Oh, Shan Gaffer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it was that. Uh, what was no, the we book in the ladder? No, that was Dermot Boy. Up in, up in my the charles. And then Sean yeah. Byrne and Glenn gave us a lift. Yeah, he used to give us a lift then. And then Carly then got the wee fiesta and we used to get a lift to train him with her. That's yeah. right. There was, no, there was no 50 cents a mile that time. No. I don't know if there's... <laughs> we were looking at <laughs> <in> the car. Aoife, <laughs> just turning to you now, Aoife, the first I remember you in, in, in the sea of nightmares about it still... Done the 12 boys final in 98, where <laughs> I, I couldn't get anybody to mark you. We played Nave Connell that year and, 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 and on the 12s. So there was a great rivalry that time between the two teams. And uh, you, you were playing wing half forward, and, and I don't know, four or five different fellows we tried on you, but we couldn't we couldn't make head, head in our 12 of you. I think it's more about 1 5 that night. But uh, you would have been obviously Nave Connell. I don't think they had any ladies' teams at that stage. You were playing with the boys' teams, obviously, starting off. Yeah, that's right. Like I just, I used to be playing at school with the boys. It was all the same ones, really. And uh, and then at a young age, I suppose I went down to the pitch. And um, I think the first year I was playing in Doc Martin boots because nobody in my house had a had a notion of what I should be doing. And uh, yeah, so it was a bit of um, it was an introduction to my house, really, to football. But um, yeah, look, I had a great time playing playing for the boys over here and. Then it came, I suppose, when I moved into the comp then. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of the our draggers actually in my class, like Snap Eagle Day, um, Maura McHugh, those girls, you know, and Stephanie Sweeney, ones that like I'd be very good friends with. And then I think it was James that got on to me uh, about moving over to our Of course, it was a big, um, it, was, it was not an easy step at the time, especially like, you know, living in Glenties and going over to our draw, But it was one of the best things I ever did. I mean... Those years, as it's just like reiterating what the girls said, we had so much fun. And I mean, along the way, you know, I remember the first two years we lost the two under 14 county finals in a row. And then we won the next two under 16 county finals and the following two minor county finals. And all the while, all those girls were kind of moving into the seniors, into, you know, Charlene, Maraid, uh, some of the waters were already there, um, the likes of Caroline. And we just gel together and, you know, it's, um, yeah, some of my fondest sporting memories definitely from that time. Yeah, there were some great victories around that time in the, in the early 2000s and that kind of stuff when you did join up in the, in the squad over here. The 1999 uh, league was about the first trophy girls, Charlene and Maraid. Uh, that was really the first kind of breakthrough that the team made. I remember... I was good to share I remember presenting the cup to Charlene down in, I think it was down in Kentucky. Do you remember much about that? That was a kind of a big deal at the time because it was the first time there was any silverware won. Yeah, yeah it, was, it, it was um it was a massive time that we um trained and trained and girls was getting fed up then. You know, when you get fed up and you're not winning and this and then eventually we came on to that and it oh, it was brilliant. Marie had had a blinder that day. Never forget mm -hmm. her. And the and the wee red Kelly Bag socks on her. Always, always, Shirlene, you couldn't forget. Well, you couldn't get the Kelly Bag socks off her. We can't get the hat. We can't get the Kelly Bag socks off her. But it was Shirlene. That that is true. Like it was hard to keep the whole momentum going. And I remember, like we were with the county. But do you know what? A good thing was Shirlene. We went to training always the Tuesday and the Thursday as well. And even though we were training with the county other days, we still went down to training. That it didn't like we all stuck together. Nobody was any better than if you were on the county, if you weren't. And yeah, yeah. James and Jimmy installed that in us, and it was nobody was any better than anybody else. And that I think we all gelled together, and the management team because they put in such a hard time, and everybody had such great time for the two men, and they're well applauded for all the work done through the years, and they're still involved. Oh, you know. Well, James was amazing, like it all the patience he had with us. And in the mornings trying to gather up girls to go and play Aww. when they didn't turn up for games. It was oh, geez, remember, Shirlene, he, he used to be like he would like, used to be like a sports shop. Remember the boots? 
He used to have uh, a pair of boots. Remember them Patrick's boots? The wee red sizes. ones with arrows on them. <laughs> but he had sizes for everybody. Boy, he used to always get them. <laughs> Hi, and indeed Noreen Geller, too. Noreen up at you know, Patty and Francis' sister, she was yeah. always getting her boot. And Sancho McGuire. Sancho oh, McGuire. Also, Unbelievable. Eva, did you, bubbles. Were you in the, the set up that? What year did you come over, Eva? When do you remember? I think it was actually 99 when I came over, and yeah. uh, like I was just a kid, really, and I was just, you know, happy to kind of go along with what was happening. But um, yeah, no, I was over young enough, so I was. And as I said, it was kind of easy for me, especially with having the likes of Natalie and uh, Stephanie Mora, those ones around, you know, I would go over with Natalie after school stay up in her house just because she and she was right beside the pitch but yeah just to you know James and Jimmy were unbelievable like the amount of times that James came over I don't think we had a car at the time and he would come over and collect me for training or he would drop me off and there was days you know you'd be hitching and that over and back and whatnot as well but no we were um we were so well looked after I mean you couldn't want we had pitches you know there, uh, there was teams that did, like ladies teams at the time that weren't getting on pitches and whatnot, but we were always well looked after, really well looked after. Well, that's good to hear. Now we went on, and the next probably big day at that stage was 2002, the Intermediate Championship. Uh, that was the first really big victory. I remember I think Maria, Maria Dever was the captain that year. Uh, have you as many memories about that? Shalene, do you remember much of that? That was a big deal at the time. Yeah. Um, the championship. Um, Maria Dever and was Carol Breslin on the team as well then? Yeah, she probably was, yeah, she would have been, yeah. Um, they were amazing up up front. I was midfield along with Caroline and Aoife Mack, were you there as well? She yeah, I think Aoife. No, Aoife Mack yeah. was midfield, yeah. Shirlene. Was she? Yeah, I think yeah, we were midfield, Shirlene, that game, yeah. I think we were yeah. midfield at the time for, yeah, that we were playing together. Yeah, I know, I think Aoife Mack was midfield. Uh, you, were center, you were centre half forward, weren't you, Maria? Yeah, yeah, that was. Yeah. And then Maria Dever was, she was in the half forward. No, Ashley Corcoran was on that team as well. Yeah, Never I seen. Caroline yeah. was full back, wasn't she? Jeez. Oh, Can it be full back, probably, or full forward? They were probably there. Full back or full forward, anyway. But I know, I remember Maria had a blinder that day. Yeah. Um, yeah. She was outstanding in yourself. Nifa Mack, all all the uh, young ones. Who was in goals that day? Was it Sancho? It'd have been, yeah. Probably was, actually. It was a very strong team at the time because it was that around the time that juniors were kind of dominating and everything. They had yeah, right. Team. yeah. Probably that, it's, it's probably a team that would win senior championships now, just as the juniors were so strong. There's such a pick that time. There was very yeah. few. The North they just won something like 11 Ulsters in a row or something ridiculous. I can't remember what it was exactly now, but they were they were really, really strong. And we always knew that we um like we could compete with any of the senior teams, but we always kind of just fell when it came to sen seniors at the final hurdle because no team was really able to beat St. Unions at the time. But um don't know if I get in trouble for saying it, but they literally had people from everywhere. So, you know, mm -hmm. now like today. St. Jude's wouldn't be as strong maybe because you have so many of the smaller clubs around that kind of were revived or started ladies clubs. So yeah, we would have had, you know, like St. Diane Toner and Maria Deveni and all of these ones, Maureen O'Donnell then, there was, you know, was back playing for Terman. So you had, yeah, you, you had the pick of the county really in St. Jude's at the time. Yeah, that's right. But, I also, but also I think what gave us the courage to, you know, compete with bigger teams was the Gaelta competitions. That we yeah. won in the Gale Ducks and you were competing against like Terman, Glenfin, and we were beating them. And then you were going outside the county and stuff. Like that, that was great that crack. We, 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 yeah, that was great crack. Like, uh, it was and it gave us the coverage. Sometimes it was frustrating sometimes because we had we had such a great team and we probably should have won more, but it just yeah. you know, just different things let us down with training and stuff and not, not yeah. enough numbers and girls away in college and different things. Yeah, and I think no, jobs yeah. too. Like girls uh, also had jobs, and it was the twelve o'clock time thing on a Sunday. I remember oh, it was no good. go. No, no yeah, go. Hard to get kids girls out on Sunday morning like that. The, 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 that was a year though, two thousand and two. That you, you know, it was another big year for the county. Again, the first kind of breakthrough then, the county level. We got got to the All Ireland final that year. Um, if had you joined the squad at that stage, or were you? Were you no, were you, I was two thousand three. So I actually went up on a bus. A group of us went up from Mardra. 
Jeez, I think we nearly had a coach up with us. Yeah. And I remember going and talking to like Shirlene and Raiden that after their game. Um, but we I was up supporting that year. Um, it was all very exciting. We had great crack on the bus, but uh, yeah, the, it was it was a tough year. They did great, and then they just just a, a tough day then in the All Ireland final. What can you remember about that game, Maraid and Shireen, that campaign? It was it was a they won the Ulster Championship, obviously, and uh, it was a tough campaign. Yeah, we were we were given no chance then against in the semi final against Cork, yeah. and um, we we played it unbelievable against them. Um, we beat them, which was a non-runner for anyone. Had everyone had us wrote off, so then we fancied our chances in against me then and the and the no, that was Galway, 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 Galway. Yeah. and uh, the Antoner then had a bad accident um, right. where she she broke her hip, and we were all devastated going to the game without her. I think that was you know a big part as well. We were a lot of us. We were all such great friends at the time. And when she had that accident, she rung me on the Saturday to say she wasn't going to be going to Dublin. And I think we were we were devastated, really, going up to the game without her. And then we got yeah. news then when we were up there that she was coming up to the game. But she was such a massive loss to us in that game because she yeah, was a Trojan on the pitch. Remember we called into the hospital, Shirley, before we went to Dublin? Yeah, most of us was crying, leaving her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Part, you may remember she was a great character, Diane, a great player too. Yeah, but we yeah. played. We, but remember, Shirley, the week before that All Ireland final, remember we played in the Ulster Club. Remember up in That's we right. played at your own team. Remember we had to go to extra time. Yeah. Remember we were so close and won in that match too that that time, and then the yeah. week following week we lost. So we lost kind of two matches. And Two big matches and uh, we're gutted. I didn't want to see anyone for a week after, a month after. Mm. It was just yeah. horrible and losing. But then we picked ourselves up then and came back the second year. We always say that we always say, with us. They always say you have to lose a final to one one, and, and obviously that was the way it turned out to be. That Galway team, in fairness, they were they, they went on to. Oh, do geez, it. they were very strong. Oh, and then Clark and all them probably were too strong for for junior at the time. But, uh, yeah, gone into two thousand and three and. There seemed to be a different. There seemed to be a, a next a bit of a buzz about the team in two thousand and three. Eva, can you can you remember that it started that campaign? Yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday. To be honest, I remember Shirlene coming and saying to me at training at Ardra that uh, the Maxi had wanted me to go up for training or trials, whatever it was at the time. And uh, I remember going up in the car with the, up in the seat. I think it was with Shirlene and Raid, and I think Yvonne and Sheila were on that day as well. But I just remember parking at St. Eunan's and all the people that I admired the most, all the all the people I admired the most in sport were the Donegal ladies that were already there. Like I was up in Co Park supporting them like a few months before that. And I just remember sitting in the car and I, I wasn't nervous, but I was definitely in awe of all the players. Like they were just walking past the car and I was thinking to myself, there's Debbie Lee Fox, there's Diane Toner, there's Marie the Betty, and thinking this is amazing. And then Shirley came over to the car and she was like, Will you get out of the car? <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and then I kind of just jolted me into life a wee bit. And yeah, um, it was one of the best years of my life. It was the, it was one of the best things I ever did. And I suppose at such a young age as well, um, I wasn't nervous about it. Um, I was never nervous that year, but it was just like a dream year. And I mean, I suppose I didn't have that that I, you know the heart from the the last year, but you could definitely. You felt it through the team because like most of the girls that were there were involved in that and you knew what it meant. So, I mean, we trained seriously hard that year and we put like so much of our lives into it. And um, I mean, to come out the other end of it uh, in Crow Park winning, you know, when you were thinking you were the, the year before, actually, when we were up with, uh, the, with the Idra team, sorry, we were allowed onto the pitch. I think it was the last year pitch invasions were a thing in Crow Park. But I remember getting on and I had the programme and I took some of the grass from, I still have that, I took some of the grass from the pitch and I got caught and got, to, if you did that today, <laughs> but, um, and that grass is still in the middle of that programme from 2002, I still have it. Um, so, I mean, the following year to be involved with that group of players and like, I was only very young and like, I must say, the likes of Shirlene and Maraid and that, like they looked after us and at times they did not want to be looking after us because myself and the likes of Yvonne and Sheila, 
um, Kelly Lacey was a bit more sensible, but I mean, we were all like 15, 16, like we, we were just, we had too much energy that we knew even what to do with. And we we're always just up to badness, but it might have lightened things up a wee bit as well for, for them. They might say otherwise, they might have a different view on it, but um, <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was one of the best years of my life, definitely. Yeah. Did any of the girls, Maria, did any of the games stand out that year that kind of was the real, you know, obviously the final stand out, but on the way to the final, the Ulster final against Calvin was a tough match, was that? Yeah, the Ulster final was a tough one. Um, we were, I think we were actually losing at half time and we got such a tune at half time and then we upped the ante. Um, we were kind of lucky to get over it. Um, but then, and sorry? And they're mad too, wasn't that? That first yeah. time, weren't we? That was yeah, tight, wasn't it? Was, we uh, it was tight enough. That was in Baba Fee, actually. There, you, if you're right, yeah, yeah th that was a tight one. But then, I suppose the young, the the new players that came on, I give them as the games went on, I give them more confidence. And we felt once we would get out of Ulster, we could get a good run going, and that we left it behind the previous year. Yeah. So that was, but it was a better sweet, if you know what I mean. At we probably probably may, could have went out in the first round, but we went on and won it in our man then. But that's their luck. I know, that's, that's the bad thing. And Shireen, you that campaign saw you a you know, big change for you. You were on the panel, you were obviously on the team as, as an outfield player, and then a week before the for the Ulster Championship started, you were, you were horse into goals, as the man says. Can you explain the story behind that? Well, we were playing a few league games, and... Uh, well, I think one of the league games, you remember, uh, we were in Leash or somewhere and it was really wet and we got hammered, I think, maybe nine goals and something to one point and, or one goal and two points or something like that. And uh, we came home after that game. The next game we played all right and still a lot of goals went in and next league game. And then after training one night, Maxie approached me and he says to me, um, can I talk to you a wee second? And I went, you can. And he says... Um, I want to change it into goals. And I went, not a chance, not a hope am I going into goals. So um, I was very apprehensive about it all all along. And he says, I'll get somebody in the coach. And I says, no, not doing it. So I came home and I, and I was raging coming home and the girls were trying to convince me coming down the road. Ah, you're good <laughs> at catching the ball. You're good at kicking yeah. it out. And I'm like, I don't care what you say. I'm not doing it. If you so were I'm very good at counselling, we were very yeah. good at counselling. That was a good, that was a good <laughs> car. If you needed counselling, it was a good car to be in. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't in the humour for counselling that night. I got, no, but we got, got speedy, off. We, we got a speedy run home that night. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped the keys off and I went straight out to Hedrigal and I went into John McConnell's and I says, John, you will never guess that they're going to put me. And he says, where? And goes, and he says, well, Shirlene, you know, he says, you know, you have to do things for the team to... But, you know, for the benefit of the team, you know, John was his wise boy. As well, says, no, I'm not doing it, Maxie, sorry, can't do it. And next thing he says, you're doing it, and that's that. So he says, we'll try out a few games. So I remember he started doing this thing with uh, Frances McGilloway, was there. she had done the first game, because I think I was too nervous even going to goals. And the next game, i done half. They had then against Monaghan in a challenge game before their my game. Do you remember that? Yeah. And that was my first full game in goals. And then it was in goals for their my game. You talk about nervous and sick and everything possible going. And every ball seemed to come in that were going for oh, goals by the end of the game. A tight game. I think there was yeah. a point or something in that game or two points. It was so tight. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and fairness, only for we had the back line, that we, the defence that we had. Like, do you know, you had Michelle Davy, you had... Um, Marie, you were in there, weren't you, for yeah. that game? Yeah. And yeah. you had um, Donna Dunyan and yeah. Diane Sully. Toner, Aoife and, Sol and, and Aoife Higgs. And, and fairness, yeah. it was that we had a great backline, and that gave me confidence with the girls that I had in front of me. So so from then on, it came uh, against me while I, I done it, as I say. So it was it was it ended up being a very good year. And the rest is history, isn't it? The, the rest the, is history. The day of the final, obviously, is, is a huge occasion and stepping out onto Crook Park floor in the final is, 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 is obviously the, the greatest thing you can do as a Gaelic footballer. Is it, what kind of nerves were involved, Maria? Were you nervous? 
You wouldn't be a nervous character, obviously, naturally, but were you nervous? Um, no, well, I, see, I wasn't starting, so my nerves would have been null and void. I was on the bench. But um, there was there was a nervousness, but you know what? It wasn't, it was good nerves, even on the way in on the bus. I think actually some of the management team was probably more nervous than the players. And they were probably in awe of, you know, the whole warm-up area and stuff. But everybody was, it was nice and relaxed. Um, but no, you see, there was like the likes of Eva Mack, Kelly Lacey, Yvonne, Sheila. They, they were new kids on the block. They had, they, they had no time for nerves. They just wanted to go out and play football. We were so, we were on the, the you know the guards guard, the guard the guard guard we edge. were on the, <laughs> on the way in. Um, no, we yeah we were just I think uh, yeah it was it was it was more of an excitement than yeah nerves than the like, nerves yeah. You were, you, were, you were you were a lot younger. Aoife, you know probably it was all you took it in your stride. Probably obviously at that stage you were only about sixteen seventeen. Yeah. That stage, it was a, it was a, did, it, did the nerves get to you at any stage? You know. With no, I remember people calling up to the house and, you know, I suppose I was always out, uh, I'd try, be trying to get all young ones to do it even now I'm, when I'm PE teaching and whatnot, but um, I was out the front of the house kicking the ball off the wall and uh, like I normally would be doing, you know, the week uh, or like at any stage, but that was the week coming up to our final and the amount of people that called up to the house from our draft, from Glenty's different, and, you know, with cards, good luck cards and all this and they were like, you know, you need to be... Uh, savor in the moment and do and but I was just happy enough doing what I'd always what I normally be doing and kicking a ball around and um I just I do remember Maxie wouldn't let me look at the the newspapers or something there was something I didn't realize I was marking uh, Noelle Early should be a uh, sister of Dermot Early's mm-hmm. and yeah and uh, I remember there was he like Maxie was telling me that I wasn't allowed to look at the newspaper I didn't really care anyway and I didn't I don't think I did look at them but um I don't think it would have really got, it would have made much of a difference. Like, I mean, you know, you're going out in an all iron final, you're going to be marking somebody that's that's going to be a good footballer. But apart from that, there wasn't really, no, like it was just pure excitement. And uh, I think uh, myself and Maraid, we were sharing a room, Maraid, weren't Yeah, well, it was all advice I give you the night before. Said, no <laughs> plan, yeah, yeah. I'm going to take the credit for it. <laughs> you know, all that scoring kept me up, but you know, uh, apart from that, she wouldn't think go to sleep, and he kept Max kept saying to me, "Make sure she goes to sleep." She was like a bee in a bonnet, up down. I was like, "Would you go to sleep?" <laughs> I don't remember, but yeah, I, that would uh, that would sound about right. Oh, Max, geez, I was Max, like. Maxie would have been known for his attention to detail, and probably still is. Obviously, you know, it would have been the team. Obviously, would have been very well organised at the time, and there would have been nothing left to chance. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely, and that's why I think he did put the older players and the younger players together. That you know there was instead of putting all the young girls together, because that's where you would get the nervousness and the excitement, and you they wouldn't probably sleep a wink. But uh, then, like it, it was like Eva Mac. She, no, she wasn't that bad actually. She, she wasn't up there. But I did. I gave her a lot of counsel on that day. It was all all that that point she scored. It was mine. <laughs> I think I think there was a day before on the way up and that there were more nerves and then we met um we were doing a training we were doing a training session then on the, the day before and there were a whole slagging thing. Remember I wouldn't dive to save a ball. <laughs> and then the training right. thing I I dived to save a ball and Gary Walsh says we're gonna win all Ireland. But that e- that <laughs> night we had a team meeting and Maxie took Mick O'Dwyer and, and he done our team talk. And yeah, oh but I met God. him in the corridor. It was me. I seen him in the corridor. Oh, did remember? you? <laughs> yes. And then oh, you were said, always you were always in the corridors flirting. I was the, the, no, I was not. I says, oh, we were coming in. He was coming out, and I said, "Snickle Dwyer." And you remember that he said, "Don't tell the Kildare ladies that I was in here." But he yeah. was. He was. I. He was very, very good. And he was at he the was game a, and everything, like because yeah. we were going up the stand to pick up the cup. He caught my hand. He says, "Fair play to you, keeper." He was so lovely, but I'll never forget his t- team talk to me. Remember the whole uh, the was on Irish the Aussie Bruce men were staying in the hotel. Yeah, that's like right. That's yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's right. They were doing the trials. Yeah. 
Yeah, because we got stuck in the lift with some of them. Oh, Jesus, the view. Red stuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we didn't get right word. Literally. We keep it for the cooking now. <laughs> got stuck in the lift. We were going into the lift and they were coming out. So I shoved them back in. No, I'm only messing with it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Did you see what I put up with John and my car? Did you see what I had to put up with on my car going to trainings? I think if Marita writes a book, it'd be worth buying. Uh, 50 <laughs> shades of green and gold. <laughs> I mean, you mentioned Gary Walsh there, and obviously Gary Walsh, uh, a legend a legend in the county, uh, one of the greatest goalkeepers we ever had, and a gentleman as well uh, off the field. Gary must have been a great influence on you at that stage. Yeah, Gary was amazing, in fairness, only for Gary. Um, from the whole start of me, the first day I met him, he was just so nice the whole time and training me in the different wee things. I never realised a goalkeeper's job was as important until I met him and learned all the different details and the angles and talking to players. And you would be worn out after every game. And people sometimes think that goalkeepers do nothing, but they have a big, big role to play. Uh, on, on a pitch and I never realised that until I got until he trained me and I have to say he was a pure inspiration uh, and it kind of made me want to do goals more then to kind of make him proud and I remember going out on the Crow Park and he says to me I'm going to ask you one thing do the same as I done clean sheet all Ireland final day and I says oh thanks Gary no pressure and then he says to me Shalene I think you're getting whiter by the minute <laughs> I was so nervous, but I once we got in caught, I remember the first ball came in high and I caught it and I dropped it. And I can remember the crowd going, whoa, it was here. <laughs> then I packed it up and I went and got, got me bairns about me. And from then on, it was just clean sailing. Well, not clean sailing, but we, we got there in the end and I ended up with a clean sheet. So I was happy to report that to him at the end of the day. We were happy and Gary was happy, so the job done. Yeah. That, yeah. that night, Gares, I remember we were up at that function that night as well. It was a fantastic night. Um, awesome. Do you remember much about it? <laughs> uh, Too much. Um, <laughs> do you remember much about it? <laughs> you know what? It was, it was. It was a great night. And it's actually something they don't do anymore. They haven't done it for such a long time. But I just thought it was one of the nicest things that, you know, all the teams that are involved in the day, everything in the one place. And I know, like, you're going to have people disappointed. But at the same time, I mean, it was so nice just everybody being together and then people being able, like yourselves, you know, it was great to see people that you knew up with it. But um, no, we were around causing absolute havoc, but um, maybe Charlene and Marie would be able to tell you more. <laughs> no, but I, I do agree. Like, it was a, a, a place that all four teams, no matter if you were a winner or a loser, you all integrated together socially. And we, like, I still have friends from other counties that I'm still friendly with. And no matter what, and that's what football does. And it is such a pity that they did do away with it. Like it's because, and also it give you a chance to even meet the president or like on an, on not on an occasion, a social occasion of the GA. Like yeah. I had, I had, you know what you call him? What you call your man that is the MEP now? You know, he used to be Kelly. him. He done my MCA from with me. There we are now, John McConnell. Good I'm a slam if you don't know it. Uh, <laughs> must mention that to him next time I see him. <laughs> yeah, it, was a, it, was a, it was a great occasion already. It was fantastic. And the, the homecoming, obviously, the following night was on the Monday night. Um, yeah. What, was, it, was it Monday night? And then was, there a Catholic, was, was there a whole week that time? I remember they were coming back to Ardra. I think it was on the Tuesday night. But the week, what, do you remember? It was the full week, yeah. Jesus, I didn't come back to the following Sunday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it was the... It was, I, I was up... It was Donegal Town on the Monday. I, or we came back to Donegal Town. We went into Bally Shannon because, remember, Frank was on that team. So she came yeah. into Bally Shannon, Donegal Town. And then, then we the went Tuesday. off. Tuesday we went to Letter Kenny. We came back then down to Kelly Riggs to down to Ardra. And then we done up Moville and Glenfin that direction. I remember we were based in the Silver Tassie. Yeah, that's right. I was Silver Tassie. Was nearly yeah. wrecked. I was so tired after a day of that. I, I don't know how we managed to keep going for a whole week of it, but Oh yeah. Yeah. Just... 
Oh, yeah. it was great though. It was, it was like something you'll always remember. You'll yeah. not, like you'll yeah. never forget it. That's the you friends know, you meet and, and the different, you know, it's it's the friends and you always, you know, I can have a chat with them or whenever. Yeah. It's it's just so nice to have their memories. That's right. And then that, uh, obviously, that year ended with a, on a high note for you as well. Shreem, you were joined Ladies Player of the Year that, day, that year. Uh, County Ladies Player of the Year. Who was, who was, who did you share that award with that year? Debbie Lee Fox. Debbie Lee Fox. Yeah, yeah. Let's get to one at the year of Alloy. And, and Marie, you were one yourself in uh, 1989. You were kind of player, ladies' player. Aye, yeah, yeah. 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 You, you got it somewhere along the line too. Aoife, did you get it? No, no, I don't think I did. Must have been. <laughs> I don't know that I re yeah. recollect. That's, 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 that's very hard to believe. Jesus, <laughs> don't put your foot in it, John. Put your foot in it now. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I feel like no. I'm. Inadequate, I don't know, did I not measure oh, up? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it must be the only thing you haven't won, Aoife, in fairness to you. But, uh, following you in 2004 then, obviously up to senior football, how did you find, was it a huge difference? Uh, did you, was it intermediate? I think there was no intermediate that time, no, was there? There was no intermediate. No, mm -hmm. straight, straight up to senior. senior. And to be honest, it wasn't, it, it didn't seem like a massive step up at all, like because we were playing Division One football in the league, do you know, the year before, so we were already playing those teams and then when it came to the Ulster Championship we actually weren't too far away from Monaghan at all we got to the Ulster final and that was one of my favourite ever matches um, just one of those great hot days in Clonus and we lost only by a couple of points um, it, was, it was a great game and then I mean even the rest of the year like we it was, it was the hardest way to go out we played Dublin and I think we had maybe four people simbined in that game the simbin just came in that year to ladies football and our Dublin game, even at that, we drew with them and it went to extra time. And in extra time, we had players simbined and uh, we ended up only losing out. I think it was, again, we lost that by a point. Yeah. point. yeah. It yeah. Was, so we were, we were there, thereabouts. Like there wasn't much a di difference between junior and senior, even because, I mean, the year before you had Galway coming from junior into senior. Yeah. Then after us, you had like the likes of our Ma, Kildare. They were all really strong senior teams as soon as they went up to senior but um no it was a great year of football but uh the worst thing was it kind of when it ended it felt like the fairy tale kind of finished because you know you went from winning in 2000 you know the heartache 2002 that the girls had then win in 2003 then actually doing really really well in 2004 but just kind of yeah it was it was just the finest short yeah we just fell short at the yeah at the end the, 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 it was just, the things tail off a bit after that, or what? Did, obviously, did Maxi step down after that year? Was it, or did he stay on? No, no, he was gone after that. Two thousand five. Then was a different management team that came in. Um, I don't know. I don't think, or maybe it Brandon. Was, was it, there. It, it was um, um, What do you call him? Emlyn. Emlyn Hughes. Uh, Hughes. Emlyn Hughes. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. He when, was when, there. When, when did you leave the the squad, Maria and Shirley? If it's obviously it's still a bit. I left in 2003, it was my last year, because I hurt my knee, right. so I wasn't there in 2004, no. 2005 was my, was my last year. So uh, you just left, you said you 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 the job done and Marie, you I know, ended on a high, I ended on a high, John. You, 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 you were sense, Marie. You, you heard that he did the hokey cokey with Sean Kelly probably, was that it? <laughs> oh no. Like <laughs> <Michael> Dwyer. No. <laughs> Not at all. It was my MCA. You don't do oh, that with your legs. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, when did you when did you go back to Kelly Beggs then? Uh, from when did you leave? When, when did Kelly Beggs get reorganised then around that time? Was it around that? Oh uh, no, Kelly Beggs didn't get. What do we say? Kelly Beggs is only going about. I'd say nine years, John. So yeah. we wouldn't. That no. Well, you're still uh, kicking that. Yeah. I, well, I got stuck with the goal job, so I'll be looking for tips with Shirlene now. You'll be up coaching me now, Shirlene. <laughs> no bother, Tom, Ray. I've them all forgotten now, that's the only thing. Oh, well, hurry up now and re rethink of them, but there's no pay in it. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, there was also a story during the rounds that, that uh, you, sometimes the county train and the jogging around the field, the laps, you could disappear behind the dugout in odd time. <laughs> that, that's for sure. <laughs> was, that, was there any truth in that? No, 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 yes, not the dugout. Yes. No, 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 no. And not the dugout. I'll put my hands up. We headed behind a tree one night, me oh, and Mo. Right. And there was a bloody ref, refereeing course. Jimmy White grasped me up 
Oh, we had a plan, but we're going to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, I, them laps used to, oh, I used to hate them. I used to hate them. But no, I, I only done it that occasion. Right. Uh, <laughs> that was the occasion that, that was the occasion I got caught. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if you, but the crimes before that were in Fun Valley, you didn't get caught behind the dugout, do you remember? Red, you'd, every second lap, you'd be in the dugout when it was dark. <laughs> oh, behind the dugout. It's all coming out now, Marie. It's all coming out now. <laughs> I don't recall any of that. I don't recall any of that. No comment. No comment. <laughs> if, uh, if uh, you went, you went travelling then. I don't mind, I'm not really sure what year it was, but you you headed you headed down under for a while. And and uh, what year was that when you headed away? But you used to always a lot of the time you used to always come back for the for the championship or for the football. Yeah. So in 2006, 2000, or it was for 12 months. I had through university. I ended up going to the Sydney Academy of Sport, and that was just for the year. Then I came back and I had to finish off my degree because it had been actually through university um, and I was playing away in Jordanstown and then I was actually still playing for our draw. I would travel up and down. Um, to be honest, I, I well, I did a lot of years, but it's tough going between county and club and then when you are somewhere else. So the year I did my master's then, I actually transferred to, to Breda and it's in Belfast and yeah. technically in County Down. So um, there's a young lad over there now in our draft from Breda. I was teaching, I, I realised Luke Boyd there. Um, he had his crest up um, and something we were doing, but they were great. I mean, I had a great time up there with them. Um, and then I was back down with our draft again. And, uh, but yeah, I would have gone over and back to, to Australia now a few times. And uh, since then, because I'm a citizen now, and like you said there, yeah, I'd come back and um, I'd just see what was happening. You know, you knew from whoever was taking the county team and you could kind of see who was involved and, you know, what the feelings were from the other girls. You knew whether, you know, whether it was a serious year of contention or not. Um, so I kind of would base it on that. And I was playing AFL over um in Australia and playing a bit of Gaelic over there too actually so yeah I was just trying I was just kind of getting away with enjoying the best of both worlds there so um yeah and uh and then I suppose I can't even remember what year it was now but one of the years I came back and uh you know the ones in Glenties had obviously been on to me um and all my family were playing for Neve Connell so um I did speak now to a few of the other ones and I said to them like <coughs> <laughs> No, you don't realise in my house the amount of times that I would I that I pipe up and I say, well, do you know when I was playing for Adra, and uh, it doesn't go down overly well in my house, I must say. But um, no, like some of like my favourite years playing club football. I mean, we're over playing for Adra, and I've never probably apart from say Brida found anything as an enjoy you know as enjoyable. And I I think the mentality back then was a lot different too. I mean, um. The commitment was a lot different. That's just what I'd see, you know, myself. But I mean, yeah, we didn't have an awful pool of players to pull from, but we always pulled together. And, you know, even if we were stuck days, I remember James and Brady, like he, we'd be going to people's houses, you know, if we needed, if we needed them. And um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it was, I think it was 14 years or something I was over in our drag, you know, and uh, I mean, yeah, there was a great group of players, and as I said, that group that won those underage county titles, like that, everybody was very, you know, just coming through. And then we had, you know, the experience that was already there, and it just made uh, it was kind of a perfect storm, really. And I mean, as you said at the start, the only thing that really stood in our way uh, was a really dominant St. Unions team, um, and we never broke that barrier, which is a pity because it's a uh, it's something that I would have, you know, loved to have achieved with our draw. And I think it was something that we could have done. But we, that group of people were just there at a time where there was a, another group of people that were completely dominant. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think like we could ever, I don't think, I don't regret any of it. Like, and I don't think that any of us have any regrets because we did give it absolutely everything. But, and we fell short of a senior championship. But I mean, we won. We won about five or six at least Gale Duck titles, which were brilliant to win. Yeah. And then we go way down the country. And I mean, <laughs> we gave a really good account of ourselves. And we had the, the crack then on top of it. So we you know, didn't go and do, you, do you remember the time we went down? <laughs> Those Gale Ducks were, were they yeah. will stand out in the memory. 
you remember the one down in Sp- <laughs> Sp- 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 and then went to go uh, Spiddle or somewhere down there. Yeah. We were staying out. No, we were staying out in Russellville. I remember Johnny D and James and Jimmy were staying in the one house. Oh, that's right. Nice. Do you remember for Jimmy? He was like, he only got out of bed. He said, I didn't sleep a bloody wink with them two snoring. And then the one was coming down the... T- <laughs> the one was coming down the chimney. He said he nearly took a b- bag of hay with them and shoved it up the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> and Jim, James and Johnny D snored the whole night. Poor Jimmy didn't get a wink sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't we didn't have our senior county championship medal, but we had that. So you know, at the end of the day, we had, we had the good memories. Good Looking now, just you mentioned the AFL, Eva, and uh, obviously there's a lot of girls over playing playing in Australia now. And uh, I was thinking to myself, Maureen and Shirley, they would probably fit in rightly over there because I've, I've watched it a few times on on, on TG Car and. See, it, always, it seems to me anyway that the Irish girls are a lot more skillful than the Australian girls. Would that be a valid point? I have to watch what I say now because <laughs> I've interested in both. I have a lot of friends in both yeah. camps, but um, no. The way I would try to explain it was actually uh, saying to my uncle today. You know, it's it's so new for women to be allowed to play this sport because it it was it would come to the point for Australian girls when they got to a certain age. It would be like me now playing for Neve Connell and playing for the boys and being at that level, but then having nowhere to go from there. So a lot of the girls that would be playing have had this massive gap and they've taken it up again. They've played other sports and taken it up again in their 20s or 30s or whatever it is. Whereas, so that kind of makes it, you know, these girls are only learning the skills. And to be honest, like I find it, it's very difficult like um, to do the things right in AFL. So when you're actually watching it at the moment, you know, it probably seems very scrappy and, it, it is to an extent because it's it's still very new and uh, the ball does not always go where you want it to go or it doesn't do the thing that you expect it to do. But um, it's something that now the young, there's youth academies, so the girls have started playing now when they're seven, eight, yes. even younger. By the time they get up to the, that they're in their 20s and they're getting drafted and whatnot, it's going to be a different game. But no, the Gaelic girls that are going over, yeah, they definitely, like, I mean, there's, it's funny, there'd be things that you could be that you could do that the commentators go absolutely nuts. So if you kick it in the inside or outside of your boot and you get a goal, like everybody goes absolutely crazy. And, you know, then the hardest thing for me, I always found was kicking it straight, kicking it straight properly. Mm-hmm. In the past, nobody ever wants to catch a ball that I kick because they call it a finger breaker because the way it it spins through the air. Right, right. Yeah. So they're like you can you always see somebody's face when they're lined up with me. I've kicked them the ball. You can see their their heart kind of sinking because they're like, Are my fingers gonna be okay after this? We so, were lucky, um, we were lucky when we were on the same team as you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not so bad with the with the round ball, but no, like the, the Irish girls definitely, I mean, go, like even the training and you know, I would always have found county training probably harder than AFL training in terms of running and yeah like I think the Irish girls come like you can see it they're very sharp they're very fit um, and now with the strength and conditioning programs all the girls have been on for years the Irish girls are actually really strong so um, yeah it, it does suit the ones that are over there for sure. Any dog outs over there Aoife? <laughs> yeah you'd be, you'd be hard pressed to find a dog out to hide it. <laughs> Well, you would find someone, Marie, no doubt about it. I, yeah, and the heat of the sun, I could pray in a sunstroke. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's the one thing is the bloody, the sun, uh, if you're out in them games and it's like 30 odd degrees, 40 degrees, it's it's horrendous. Like by the end, uh, the next day is not is not good. But um, no, it's um, it's great to see like sport going like that. And I mean, do you know all the... All the media and everything's so behind it and it's on channel seven in australia like it's on all day over there and uh, yeah they're getting they're actually getting really good um you know viewers and everything higher than the men sometimes in some of the games so um yeah it's it's great to see it that's definitely a change very good yeah, yeah. They're, they're probably yeah. but they're probably more skillful than the men good on you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it might take a while, but yeah, we'll, we'll get there. Oh, 2020. Come on, 2020. That's, that's right. It. That's right. And Eva, just to mention, we couldn't move on without saying, mentioning, obviously, your, the highlight 
possibly the career, the 2010 one, the All Ireland one in 2010. Obviously, you were captain of that team. That was a huge, a huge day for you. Yeah, it was funny. I was chatting to Charlene earlier there, and it was saying, um, like that was seven years after I had made my um, debut, I suppose, with Donegal, and I felt so old and you know grounded and just. <laughs> and it was only 23, so I suppose it was like at that stage, I was probably thinking I'm I'm well through my career at this point, but. Um, no, it I can was imagine how we felt looking after you. <laughs> yeah. It was so funny because uh, on the bus and that, you know, you'd hear girls say, and then, you know, some of the really young girls in the team and they'd say something. They were like, uh, what age were you when Aoife Mack won the All-Ireland back in 2003? And some of them were like, oh, I wasn't born or whatever, you know, <laughs> in recent years, or they were three years old or something. So I used to get called granny then for, for a good bit. But um, no, it was it was unreal. Like Michal came in again, kind of the same way Maxi came in in 2003 and he just changed things up. And um, yeah, um, it was an honour. Like we were just driving in the car and Michal said to me, we we're coming into the roundabout in Larry Kenny and he goes, uh, I want to ask you, he goes, will you be my captain? <laughs> and then, um, yeah, like I'll never forget that. And it was just such a great year. And I knew, I always knew we were going to win the All Ireland that year. Like I, I could see it step by step. And that's the way I put it across to the Gares. I was like, this is, each game is a step and you don't look past it, but that's, you have the final goal up there. And um, I think they had it written up. And uh, yeah, it was, it was just, uh, it was a brilliant year. So it was. Um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, it, was, it was a very strong team at the time, too, more than the 2000. Yeah, again, it, probably the exact same way that we had a load of young girls come in, um, and it was just this mixture then of kind of girls that had more experience and the the youth. And I think that's what happened before. Um, I mean, then you know, every few years that seems to have happened, Donegal ladies. I mean, the next time there was like a massive change or somebody brought something new was when Davy McLaughlin came in in, in 2015. And that his approach changed things around. So, you know, every every while there seems to be just this this push. And I mean, in Donegal, you do have um, issues with girls training in different places. I mean, we used to the last year I played was 2018 before I went back to Australia, and we used to train a lot in Tyrone because it meant that the girls from Dublin could drive up. The girls from Belfast could drive to Tyrone and then we'd have to drive. So, you, you know, you were doing that, going to training in Oma or, or past Oma in the Gervahi Centre. And um, I mean, it's, an, it's a massive commitment, you know. But I mean, that's something that Donegal uh, does struggle with because you've got so many people that go away for work, for college. Um, maybe other years we would have left it. We would be like, sure, do your own bit and we'll see you at the weekend or whatever. But no, um, yeah, there's uh, we're, we've been lucky to, to have those times where things have just really come together for us. Yeah, Sharina Maraid, we'll to, you, you first, Maraid, and we haven't much time left. But is there anything you would have yeah. done to Maraid, or with the, you know, what things stand out for you just looking back in your career now and you're still playing? It's great to see you're still playing, but was there anything really that stands out apart from the All Ireland? You know, you know, is there any, any regrets you have or things you would, you would say, well, I'm glad I've done that, you know. No, I wouldn't say regrets, John. Um, actually, all the 10 years, even with our draw, the many years I played with our draw, do you know, you ha you, they have to be a winner and they have to be a loser. But you all, the plus side is the social, the good friends that you have made. A, 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 like, you have a huge circle of friends. And no matter what sport you have, you do, you do whether it's soccer, Gaelic, rugby, basketball, you have them friends for life. Yeah. You have them friends for life. And losing, that's where your friends come in more than when you won. And yeah. like, it's it's like a family. And even though I was always from Killy Beggs, like I was from Killy Beggs and I played, came down to our dad to play, there was no difference made on us. Do you know what I mean? Um, but the only thing I, I, I hope that there is the same at the levels out that girls are going to be soon treated the same as men. And I would hope that would be the only thing that I would hope. That it's a level playing field, that we get the same even airtime, even training facilities, fin even financial supports, which little has jumped on board and it's great to have. Because at the start we wouldn't have. Yeah, the little campaign has been huge. I mean that, yeah. that 
that lady's dad is fantastic playing up the hill as yeah. really, really oh good. yeah yeah Shireen what about but, yourself I'm ready. Are you gonna say something there? Oh, I'm ready. Cut you off. No, 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 no. I'm finished. No, I'm okay. <laughs> you sure not ready? No, I'm not gonna sing. Okay, all right. Um, any regrets for me? No, I couldn't say I have any regrets. Um, as for memory, um, I have to say it was probably the best time in my life playing and getting to know them girls. Um, with all the teams I played on. And we while managing as well. It was a great experience. Um, the prob probably the one thing probably annoyed me when I played football was that girls weren't recognised the same as men because they put in the same time, they done the same training, they done the same driving. They, you know, we were all over the county, and probably we weren't recognised until we started one in a wee bit. But that's probably like any team. Yeah. But at the same time, as the years went on, kind of the men kind of stood by us more. And I think that's all we kind of really wanted. I remember the first time there were changed was when we were playing in Ulster final and I think our Dran Four Masters was playing in the men. And the time, that time, I felt great because our club men said they didn't want to play because the ladies was playing. And that was really the start for me when, you know, we felt right. Thank God now the men is in behind us. And that, that was probably one of the best times. And other than that, having the friends and you still be in touch with them and chatting to them, you just can't explain what it, what it's like ha meeting all them girls and having friends and knowing at any time you could pick up the phone and speak to one of them. We probably don't do it half enough, but hopefully <laughs> yeah, we'll get, get together say. again soon. Yeah, and that's always the way, isn't it? Like, um, But you mightn't see the, the people. Like... But you can just pick up where you left off. It could be ten years, and you still, yeah. you'll still have the same relationship with that person, which is great. Like, right. exactly, yeah, yeah. If yeah. a last word with you, you're back in the county panel here. Is that tr is that true? No, well, I'm uh, just at home at the moment, but no, I don't know what I'm doing this year, and I haven't heard anything, so <laughs> I don't know what's happening yet. Funny, funny. I thought, um, I thought I heard a, a whisper that you were back in the county panel, but no, um, I'm back in the country. I <laughs> I'm back in Donegal. <laughs> <laughs> Are you spreading rumours again, John? Are you spreading rumours again? <laughs> I, was hoping, I was hoping it was true, actually. No, I'll we'll have to, I don't know now what's going to happen, but um, I haven't heard anything. But no, at least I'm, in, I'm probably in the, in the right country anyway to start with. But um, we just have to see what happens. But uh, no, I'm just hoping there is any kind of sport, especially for the young ones, to be honest, because I mean, even just from teaching at the moment, you know, I can see that young people are actually really suffering. Um, just with the lack of social so you know socializing really and seeing people and I think um we're all just waiting for the day that I mean that the gates open on the pitches and that and we can go out and just even train if if that's if that's something that we can do. But um yeah so no idea what's going on yet. No plans. No plans very good. You think you're taking taking a bit of time out. Listen girls that's we we are kind of run out of time now but listen thanks very much. That was great and I just thanks, William, John. on behalf of the club really the three years obviously is just plays the trail for ladies in the club way back yourselves and Carolyn obviously before you is Carolyn Breslin and as I say it's great to chat to you and it'll always be an important part of the club here and you know you can always come back no matter what no matter what no, how, how old we get and how, how long it goes on so thanks very much girls and uh, hopefully we'll see you all soon and stay safe thanks a million okay thanks, thank you